So we'll now start reading 17, which is aggregate output, prices, and economic output. The general idea being what we've done so far is microeconomics, which was the study of households, the interaction of household with firms, how do firms decide how much to supply, and so on. Now we are moving into the realm of macroeconomics which is the study of the aggregate behavior of households, firms and markets. And economists, uh, policy makers, investors ultimately focus on macroeconomic variables. So this is, I think, very interesting and extremely important. The first topic we'll cover here is the concept of aggregate output and income. And let's just understand some basic terms and interaction. So when we, and these are all taken from the curriculum. So when we talk about the aggregate output of an economy, it is the value of all goods and services produced in a specific, specific period of time. So that's aggregate output and we'll get into more detailed definitions shortly. But just get this into your head for now. The aggregate income of an economy is the value of all payments earned by the suppliers of factors of uh, by the suppliers of factors used in production of goods and services. So this, for example, would include the labor that is provided. So you provide labor to firms. For that, you receive an income. So all that is included in the aggregate income. Now this is critical. Because the value of the output produced must accrue to the factors of production, aggregate output and aggregate income within an economy must be equal. And let's look at it very simplistically. So we have households and we have business firms. All right. Now, what happens between households and firms? So firms provide goods and services to households, so that people, families, etc. And what do households do? They provide labor and capital to the firms. Now, when the firms sell goods and services to households, households pay the firm. So, uh, so goods and services is the dotted line and dollars or pounds or whatever currency is going from households to businesses. Now, where do businesses get their labor from? Households. So, so where do, if a business wants to buy a property to build a factory, who do they pay? They pay some, some person owns the land, so they have to pay that person. Households also might invest their capital, their money in businesses. So labor and capital, so factors of production are provided by the households to the firm and then the firm has to pay wages and profits to the households. Wages being your regular wages and then profits very simplistically in terms of say dividends or interest on bonds and so on. Ultimately where does that go? So ultimately that flows from firms to households. So very simplistically put, the total income must equal the total aggregate output. So let's get into this in more detail. Perhaps the most important term in economics is GDP, gross domestic product. And unfortunately, it's not as well understood as it should be. So the goal would be in the next 20 minutes, you, have a, you should get a pretty good understanding of what GDP means and why it is important to an analyst. In fact, any economic report that you read for any country, the most important variable that you will see is the gross domestic product of that country. So to even if you are talking about, say, the BRIC countries, perhaps headlines will be China's GDP will exceed that of the US by so and so year. And then as important and related is the growth rate of GDP. How fast is the GDP growing? Because that 
is the biggest indicator of how well an economy is doing if on average our gdp grows at 4% in pakistan in a given year if it grows at 2 or 3% that means we are not doing well however if in a given year like say in 2006 i believe the gdp grew at say 7 or 8 or 9% then that's great okay so how well an economy is doing you measure actually the growth in <coughs> gdp so what exactly is gdp we need to understand that there are two ways of looking at gdp and they should both give the same answer one way of looking at gdp is that it is the market value of all final goods and services produced within the economy in a given period of time so this is called the output definition so this is the definition in terms of how much a country is producing and this is the definition that you probably hear more often i have underlined two points and i'll come back to them in subsequent slides the other way as we just discussed there is an equivalence between output produced by firms and income so the other way of looking at gdp is the aggregate income approach the aggregate so gdp is also the aggregate income earned by all households all companies and the government within the economy in a given period of time so this is called the income definition so these are the definitions of gdp now they are two ways to actually coming up with the gdp so one is the definition so if we are so somebody in pakistan is calculating what was the gdp of pakistan for 2010 how do you do that what's the approach what's the mechanical approach for coming up with the gdp and there again there are two approaches one approach is called the expenditure approach where we simply sum the amounts of goods and services produced during the period so notice the period so you will always see gdp for say 2010 for a given year or you might have gdp for a given quarter so uh, the period is important the second approach is called an income approach here the gdp is the sum of the amounts earned by households and companies during the period including and this includes wage income interest and profit so that means that as households we get our regular wages but if you are also getting dividend checks and coupons for bonds or pibs that we have that also is included in income so that's the income approach both should give us the same answer now as a general point uh, this is more from a uh, preparing you for a possible exam question in general only goods whose value can be determined by selling in the market are included in gdp calculation however there are a couple of exceptions one is that owner occupied housing is also added in gdp and goods services provided by the governments are also included in gdp even though there isn't a formal market but if the government is providing a service that service is monetized and included in the gdp now just to just to have you understand the depth of this area calculating gdp is a fairly elaborate and complicated exercise and we are not becoming experts on that right now however those who are interested either on my website or i will mail this to you there is a 150 page document published by the oecd which talks in detail about how the gdp is calculated so those who want let me know i'll just mail it to you i have it right here otherwise i'll just put it on my website at some point but oecd stands for the organization for economic collaboration and development it's a european organization and there is a tremendous amount of good uh, material on that website for those who are interested my advice would be do this after the exam so clear your exam and then if you are excited about this material it's good stuff read it afterwards you will learn a lot all right now again from an exam perspective you need to be able to calculate gdp given some basic information so let's first talk about the expenditure approach what was the expenditure approach 
So this is simply the sum of the goods and services produced during the period. Okay. So again with this they are there is a method A and a method B under the expenditure approach. One is you can simply look at the value of the final goods produced. This is called the value of final output method or you can look at the sum of the value added and we will understand this through a very uh, through through a through the milk supply chain and this supply chain probably has a few more hops than we might imagine in pakistan but let's say that uh, i don't know this is probably a european or a american example where milk goes through several hops before reaching the consumer so milk starts from the farmer and then the farmer sells it to the miller who sells it to the baker who sells it to the retailer who finally sells it to the mm -hmm. consumer so if you ever wanted to know this is the supply chain for milk in maybe european countries okay so now the two methods value of final output method what that is saying is if ultimately milk is sold for 1 pound or 1 euro to the consumer so eventual selling price is 1 so that is the final product you don't worry about all these intermediate stages you just take the price of the final product and then use a similar method for all goods and services sold so the final product that is ultimately sold just take all those total prices or total revenue effectively that is your gdp and what's this method called this is the value of final output method another way is to look at the value added along the chain so if you look at the value added along the chain the farmer sells to the miller for 0.15 so how much value is added 0.15 in the next link the miller sells to the baker for 0.46 so how much value is added 0.31 and so on the miller sells to the uh, so miller sells to retailer for 0.78 so value added here is 0.32 and then the retailer sells to the consumer value added there is 0.2 Point two two. You add all these value added stuff, and you will get to one. Okay, so it comes to the same thing. You just need to know that both methods are used. Obviously, in real life, this would be rather complicated. But in a manufactured exam scenario, it should be fairly easy. It's simply adding. I can foresee them giving you a question to calculate the value added. where one answer can be calculated based on simply summing up the receipts and another answer can be arrived at by looking at the value add in each process just knowing how the cfa people think i'm quite sure that they will try to catch you on that distinction because somebody who hasn't studied this is quite likely to simply add up all the prices along the supply chain so i'm placing a small bet here that that is going to be one question on your exam okay so those if you found this clip interesting and informative please visit my website www.arifirfanullah.com here you will find a tremendous amount of useful material right here in the 2011 cfa video lecture series you will find the entire level 1 curriculum for free and most of the material here is still relevant so this is worth looking at the 2012 video lecture series covers both level 1 and level 2 these lectures are available for a fee and uh, finally down here uh, financial management at iba here you will find my lectures at iba uh, for a course on financial management plus you will find lots of useful spreadsheets that can help you with financial modeling so again please visit 
www.arifirfanullah.com thank you